Hey there, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Entrepreneurial Live Interviews. Um, this afternoon, I am interviewing someone that you may have seen on earlier on our program. Uh, and I wanted to re-interview Nancy because uh, I really, she had so many good things to share with you guys. And unfortunately, we were having some technical difficulties and it was super hard to hear most of her conversation. So I felt like it was really important to get her back on because again, what we're trying to do here to, is talk to you guys, not only about entrepreneurs and, you know, I know that's in the title, but maybe not just business owners, also business leaders, and also people who might be thinking about starting a business because every one of these people has, you know, a similar theme through their story in that the things that drive them to do what they do. So um, I, again, I wanted to reintroduce you to a friend of mine, a colleague, uh, Nancy Gusman. Nancy, thanks so much for your time. Two times for me to try to get you on and get your story <laughs> out there. That's fine. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. So, uh, Nancy, uh, oh, absolutely. I'm just thrilled to have you on. So Nancy is going to talk to us first. Give us a little bit about your backstory. Tell us, you know, where you came from, how you got to where you are, who you are, what you're doing. And uh, let's let's see what we can find out about your story today. Okay. So um, I was uh, born and bred Montgomery County, still live here. Um, we, I, I went to law school and came out and was never going to be a real estate attorney. And then my first job out of law school, I ended up doing real estate and I've kind of gotten stuck there forever. Um, I own a small title company in law practice. And we handle real estate settlements, both commercial and residential. And um, I specialize in handling um, investor transactions and other more difficult types of transactions. Nice, nice. So let's go back to that and talk a little bit about this first. So when you went to law school and you said, I never wanted to do real estate. Uh, so what, obviously you, you got thrust into that. What, what did you, what did you think you were going to be doing when you went to law school? Oh, I thought I was going to save the children. <laughs> All those ideals. Save the children from? Where were you going to general, save the children was, from? I was going to just, I, I had gotten, when I was an, an uh, undergrad, I had worked with some programs with children in distress. And I was looking oh, at wow. being a ch child advocate of some sort. Interesting. Very interesting. Well, you know, given that the um, line of uh, specialty that you do do closings in there, you know, that helping theme seems to go throughout maybe your your story a little bit. So that's kind of interesting uh, how some of these things interweave themselves. So so mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more about what you do now for those that don't understand or don't know what um, what, you know, be owning a title company is all about or a title company is all about. Tell us a little bit about that and what you do and and um how you do help, you know, resolve things. Okay. So what a title company does is it handles the actual closing for when somebody buys or sells real estate or refinances. So we search the title and we make sure that there are no issues that might come back and haunt somebody later, like ownership issues or Maybe there's an old mortgage on the property that's never been released from the from the land records for some reason, or maybe some other issues. Um, so what we do is we check to make sure that those issues don't exist. And if they are there, then we have to solve them. Um, we also help in facilitating the transaction. So there's a contract between your buyer and your seller. And we help facilitate to make sure that the buyer is getting what they counted on getting and the seller is getting what they counted on getting. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. And so what I understand you saying is being a, a title company uh, and doing that closing. Um, so you actually not only just handle the paperwork at the closing and coordinate that, but you also make sure that that ownership is clear. And so why would there, I mean, you said some reasons for that, but so why would it affect me if I was buying a house and there was a mortgage that, sorry, I just have this buzz today that's driving mm -hmm. me crazy. So um, so how would having a mortgage on that property that just never got released affect me? Because it's already been paid off, right? So what difference does it make? Well, we don't always know that it has been paid off. And it creates, it, so, and that lender who held that mortgage 
would have the right to come in and try to foreclose if it has not been paid off. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. All right. That's cool. So let's talk instead of, uh, or let's shift gears for a second and, mm -hmm. and talking about your business, let's talk about how you got to the be in, in that business. So you worked in a practice for a while and did real estate. What is exactly does that mean when you worked in a law practice and did real estate? So a, a lot of, a, a lot of law firms, um, do the same thing that I do in the title company and they handle the real estate transactions. Um, when I first got out of law school, um, it actually was new in Maryland that non-attorneys could do uh, real estate transactions. So it used to be that it had to go through a law firm. And they recently had passed new law in Maryland that allowed for non-law firms or title companies to handle the closings. So when I got out of law school and I joined this particular law practice, they were still doing the real estate uh, transactions through the law firm. And oh. so in addition to some other things that they had me doing, mostly what they had me doing was this. Interesting. Okay. Uh, not something that you had ever in your, in your mind to be going in that direction. But so what took you from that law firm? So what was next? So did you go straight from that law firm to open in your own business? No, I didn't. I, um, I worked in other title offices uh, and law firms over time. I actually had a similar business back in the 1990s uh, with a law practice and a title company. Um, and then I shut that down somewhere around the year 2000 and went to work for a title insurance company. Um, and, and I worked there for a little while. And then when I left there, I went back to working for other people and I opened this company in or a combination of companies in 2012. And so obviously that entrepreneurial spirit sort of runs through your bones because you've been in, this is like the second time around of doing this. So what made you decide doing it yourself was the way to go? So because I specialize in handling, um, I'll say non conform transactions, um, my specialty is dealing with property that have title issues that need to be resolved maybe more complicated title issues that need to be resolved. And I also um, specialize in more complicated transactions, commercial transactions and uh, people who are investing in real estate. And the structure of those contracts is a little bit different from your normal everyday people who are buying and selling houses to live in them. Um, okay. And I found that the people I was working for and with didn't quite understand how to do the kind of work I do and they didn't appreciate it. So it made mm -hmm. it difficult for me to actually be able to do what I do. Ah, gotcha. And so I imagine because you have a specialty, um, then you probably have specific people that know you do that specialty and they want to work with you because of the challenges that maybe it takes to get their particular uh, closing taken care of. They know you can do that. Right. That's, that is correct. Um, and I have, I kind of have a reputation through the investor world. Um, and so therefore if people haven't met me, they at least know of me and they know that they can come try to work with me. Nice. Nice. So when you talked about, um, and I just love this because, you know, guys, this speaks to being an entrepreneur and figuring out your niche. Like, you know, I don't even know how many title companies or law firms there are across the United States. Um, and when you think about somebody saying, I'm going to start my own firm and I'm going to do my own closings. Um, and you say, well, well, there's one down the street. Why would you do that? But you know your specialty. And so we've talked a little bit with different people about, you know, understanding your, your specialty, your superpower, if you will, your energetic piece. And uh, obviously Nancy's touched on that and said, you know, here's what is really what makes me juiced up as if you will. I mean, I, and so maybe you could speak to that a little bit more like your energy. We find with entrepreneurs all the time that there is um, a specialty, uh, maybe not just the specialty because you've talked about that, but the thing that really gets you excited about what you do, you know, just it is the driving thing that makes you keep wanting to do what you're doing. And for you, it sounds like working with these investors, but give us a little more insight on that. Talk to us a little bit about how that makes you feel because we're talking to people who are thinking about any kind of business and, and how that feels, what that's, what that's about. Well, there's a couple of things. One is that I, um, I truly believe that investing in real estate is a much more secure investment 
than investing in the stock market. I also think that people need to be have be diverse diverse in their investments, but um, usually real estate holds value uh, more consistently than stocks or bonds. Um, and even when real estate drops, like it did several years ago, it comes back up. Um, so it's, it's if you hold on to a piece of real estate long enough, you're going to make money on your investment most of the time. Um, so that's kind of where the investor passion comes from. The, the niche comes from the fact that not all title companies and closing professionals really understand the investor market. And they don't understand the nuances and the the differences between the way that those transactions operate and your normal home buyers who want to live in a house. So you um, you do all different types of closings, but the thing that makes you um, really happy, excited, uh, want to do what you do, and the reason you have your own company is doing these specialty kind of transactions. Right, exactly. And, and, you know, and as you're, as you're talking, I'm thinking, and, you know, my other specialty is working with um, first time home buyers or sellers who are in distress on their properties. So I can help consumers as well um, in either buying a house for the first time, or maybe resolve the problem with their uh, mortgage companies when they lose their job or um, as right now we're going on with people losing their income. Yeah, 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 for sure. Well, the one thing that I hear th through your your conversation is this wanting to help people in uh, difficult situations through the investors, uh, first time home buyers, maybe you just are trying to navigate that system, sellers that might be in mm -hmm. distress. You know, when you went to law school, you said you started out because you wanted to help um, children that were in difficult situations. And so it sounds like you've taken that passion and shifted it a little bit more into this real estate market, which you found this, this really incredible passion for. So, um, you said you had been, been in business and since the, um, since, uh, in the beginning of 2000. And so obviously you have, and you've done it twice. So obviously you have a lot of history with that. So what would you say is, um, what's the number one thing people ask you about your business? My name, <laughs> the name of my oh, company. How are your name? Of your company came from. But, yep, the name of my company is Brick House Title, and yes, it did come from the song. <laughs> All right, that and that song is the Commodore song. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Is that because you're a Commodore fan, or you just thought it was a cool name, or you could spin the name because of the song and what you were doing being a house? All of the all of the above. Um, <laughs> you know, it's fun. I like to be provocative. And um, it was a nice provocative name because those people who know the song, they always ask me or they sing to me or something. And then people who aren't familiar with the song, they think of brick and mortar. So it kind of went, it kind of goes both ways. Yeah, yeah, for, for sure. So tell me one other thing, Nancy. Um, so people understand when you were talking about your uh, law practice and the title company being uh, the two companies in one, if you will, what's the difference between you and a title company that doesn't have a law practice that is, that is tied to? You have alluded earlier about the fact that people who don't are not attorneys can do closings, but um, talk to us just a minute about the difference between a law practice and a title company or um, you know, a standalone okay. kind of title company and the fact that you have a law practice connected. So a title company is limited as to the services it can provide. It can, the, the title company can handle the real estate closing. They can prepare legal documents only if it's connected to the transaction and the sale of title insurance. Um, by having the separate law firm, I have the ability to produce to, for one thing, to produce legal documents that a title company may or may not be able to produce. Mm -hmm. um, I've often helped my clients um, draft contracts, prepare loan documents, um, have deeds that have absolutely nothing to do with a particular transaction. They just want to change the title to the property. Mm -hmm. um, I can also provide legal advice sometimes. So mm -hmm. sometimes my buyer or my seller in uh, in my real estate transaction actually needs legal advice. So the law firm can then provide that, that consultation. 
Gotcha. Gotcha. So that definitely makes you um, a little bit more well-rounded when somebody needs, has some specialty issues, which are the things that you're providing very well anyway, because those are, that's your niche and that's where you right. are in this business. So that's really exciting. Um, and so uh, finally, I guess I want to wrap up by asking you, uh, how do you explain to somebody who has no idea what you do, never just met you uh, when they ask you what you do for a living? What do you, what do you say to them in 10 words or less? What do I say to them? I tell them that I specialize in handling real estate transactions and helping buyers and sellers meet their goals with regard to buying and selling property. Awesome. That is fantastic. Well, guys, you know, like I, I said a little bit earlier, there's a common theme here between entrepreneurs and people finding uh, the pieces that are really important to them, finding um, something that matters, that makes them want to help other people uh, find something, do something, have, have something that they need to use. And it's that theme in this entrepreneurial spirit in, you know, the specialty that you find yourself in and being able to cultivate that into some type of business to earn a living basically, um, or to earn a side hustle. As we talked to Denise earlier, the same kind of thing to earn that side money for whatever you might want to do. So Nancy, I really appreciate this was uh, so much more inclusive because we could, uh, we weren't having the technical difficulties and we could hear you right. better. And I really hope that everybody was able to tune in today and see the um, information we were really trying to share with them the other day. And honestly, I think we got a little bit more insight today than maybe we did the other day as well because of the distraction. So thank right. you so much for taking your time today. I really appreciate you, Nancy. And uh, thank you, I know Tom. you have a busy schedule. I appreciate you being on with me. Well, thanks for inviting me. This was a, this was a joy. Absolutely. Thank you, lady. All right, you guys, uh, don't don't disappear. We have another great interview coming at four o'clock this afternoon. So stay tuned for that. Again, I will post um, the link for this live interview with Nancy on uh, Facebook tomorrow so she can share it on her page. And so you guys can see it on YouTube or on my page or anywhere else. And Nancy, if somebody wants to get in touch with you, how do they reach you? Um, the best way is to email me at n. And then that way, if anybody can wants to see it, they can see it there uh, and click on it as well. Nancy, thanks again for tuning in. See you guys Thank later. You. Thanks for tuning in to Entrepreneurial Live Interviews with Connie Fuxa. I'm Connie Fuxa, and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye-bye.